something else of a different topic? Yes, uh, these are more technical questions, but uh, please explain the focus, focus wheel, the 85 second segment, which I realize is 17 seconds times five, but uh, I'm interested too in the process of vibration. Is the sequence of thought feeling of the same vibrational frequency and how do they influence the manifestation process? Is the Seth material an accurate portrayal of ego personality structure? And uh, that would wrap it up. <laughs> he doesn't want much. <laughs> I'm expanding. Every process that we have offered, without exception, has been for the purpose of helping you to vibrate more in the place that allows what you're wanting. The idea of the focus wheel is really not so different from the idea of virtual reality in the sense that it is bringing you to a place of vibrationally allowing what you are wanting. The focus wheel process goes like this. If you've ever seen the, uh, the merry-go-round in the playground where uh, someone jumps on and someone else is making it spin and as it gets going pretty good and you try to jump on sometimes it's a bit of a problem because it's going so fast and you can't get moving fast enough that you can get onto it and so when you try you just get thrown off into the bushes the same sort of thing often happens when you decide that you're going to find a positive thought about something when you are not already on a positive trail in other words it's like the wheels are already turning and it's maybe even turning in a direction differently than what you're wanting and you can't really slow the wheel down enough to get on it or you can't get on it in other words but the the idea of the focus wheel the reason that we talked about it in the focus wheel format was to help you to realize that things are in motion and you have to get up to speed with whatever it is before you can join it and so here is the way the focus wheel works before we go there, let's come back to this idea of virtual reality and let's talk about the 17 seconds for a bit because all of these are all talking about the same thing. When you give your attention to something and you focus upon it just for a little bit of time, 17 seconds, in that little bit of time, you activate a vibration within you that is significant enough that it has pulling power. So law of attraction then comes into play and other thoughts that are then like it join it. So let's say you find a thought and you just ponder it gently for 17 seconds until it activates within you. And now another thought like it joins it. And now you've got a bigger, more dynamic, not necessarily faster moving thought, but it is a thought that has greater attracting potential. And as you hold that thought for another 17 seconds, another thought now like it joins it. And then another thought like it joins it. And this is the way this momentum happens, you see. So the earlier in this process that you are able to ascertain the value or not value of the thought that you're entertaining, the better. The other day, as Esther was watching Tracy, daughter Tracy, with granddaughter Kate in the little carrying thing, and Tracy is moving through the office, and Kate, Esther is walking behind, and she's watching Kate in the little carrying contraption, and she is having a sort of bumpy ride. Mother is not really aware of how many things she's banging it on. <laughs> banging it on her leg, moving it over this way, ducking it under a tree, bringing it in here. And little Kate is sort of having a, uh, <laughs> a rough ride. And then as they go through the door, Kate is moving her hands around a great deal. And now Esther is concerned that as they go through the door, Kate may get her fingers pinched or something, and all of those old maternal, now grand maternal instincts are coming forth within Esther. And then she thought, Tracy needs to be more careful. And instead of re realizing at the early subtle stages that she had activated a thought that was attracting to another thought, that was attracting to another thought, all of a sudden, Esther remembered, now Tracy is out of sight altogether, and Esther remembered seeing a little child get its finger shut in a car door. And the pain of that thought was strong. And Esther is walking through the bushes by herself, and she just shouted right out loud, no, no. She was shouting no at the universe for delivering such a thought to her, and no at herself for letting herself get there, and no at the idea of taking it any further. And really what she was proclaiming was her 
discomfort about going so far along a trail of a thought that she does not want. Now, there were a few 17 seconds involved in that before it reached that point of escalation, and certainly there would be many, 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 many more thoughts involved before Esther could ever influence anything of a negative nature. But you're getting the sense of what we're talking about. Everything that manifests in your experience starts with a slight thought that you barely notice, that you practice long enough that it becomes a bigger and a bigger and a bigger and a bigger and a bigger player in your vibration. So the idea of the focus wheel is sometimes you're standing in a place where you don't want to be. For example, Esther having this concern that something might happen to little Kate's little fingers or toes or something. And so Esther would realize she's not there and she might say, especially if it's a worrisome thought that keeps coming up, it's time for me to do some real work on changing my vibration. I've obviously got an active vibration that comes up so easily, it's activated by so many things, time for me to do a little work and leave that vibration in a better feeling place. And a focus wheel is a good process to do it. So. Now she would begin reaching for a thought, and the reason that we talked about the spinning uh, merry-go-round is because Esther's going to have to, or you would have to slow that wheel down enough that you could get on. In other words, if you just reach for a really good feeling thought and you're nowhere near it, you're not going to get on. And so slow it down enough that you can find a thought that feels good. And so what you're reaching for is something that you already easily offer. In other words, you could say something I already believe that matches my desire. So Esther could say something like, this is a little baby of well-being, and well-being is natural for her. Now that thought, Esther has no contradiction with it at all. It's an easy thought for her to find, and as she finds it, as you said, you could feel that sort of mushy feeling you were talking about. Esther can feel that that's a thought that she easily accepts. It wasn't work or struggle at all. Esther knows that she's on the wheel. So then she can say, she could say something like, and nothing bad will ever happen to Kate. Well, now she's off in the bushes again because that thought was, that thought was too big. In other words, she doesn't know that. She knows kids have things happen. She knows that there are going to be some things along the way. And so that thought took her right off. So now she's going to reach back for a better feeling thought. So she might say something like, uh, little Kate has inner guidance also. Esther knows that. That thought feels really good. And her mother has inner guidance, too. Esther knows that. That thought feels very good to her. And uh, well-being really is the order of all things around us. That thought feels good, too. Now, you notice how we're staying really general because it's easier for Esther to stay in that good-feeling place in general than if we try to take her right to the specifics. So we would encourage that she just stay here for a little while until she finds her footing, until she reminds herself that well-being abounds. And then she could say something like, oh sure, there'll be bumps and bruises. Now that didn't throw her off in the bushes. But well-being is predominantly the experience and will predominantly be the experience of this little one. And she can figure it out as she goes. And this isn't anything for me to worry about. This is not anything that's my business. It's not anything to worry about. All is really well here. Now Esther's sort of spinning on her wheel. The energy has picked up. She's becoming more specific and she's still in alignment. Now it might seem that nothing has changed very much, but we would say that as Esther is now chewed here for a little while, she has left those worrisome thoughts in a softer, less worrisome place than they were before. In other words, Esther didn't even realize that she had worrisome thoughts to be activated until they were activated. And once they were activated, then with using the process of the focus wheel, she has soothed them and left them in a better feeling place. That's the point of it. The reason we call it a focus wheel is because it is a determined point of time where it is your dominant intention to leave a vibration in a different place. Now today, we are giving you the game of virtual reality for the same reason, for the same purpose. In other words, they accomplish the same thing. Thank you. Yes?